Hello. In this video, we'll take a close look at recent games by Magnus Carlsen and how he wins against Togon Master. While we look at the whole game, we'll focus on the critical moments where he makes a difference. In this game, Carlsen is black and plays the Sicilian against Anish Giri. Bishop b5, a sideline in the Sicilian, and the game goes on. So interestingly here, e5 trying to grab the center and right away d6 to contest the power of the center by white. That's an interesting decision by Geary targeting the c6 pawn and giving a check. And interestingly, Magnus captures. So now we have an imbalanced position. Black has captured the pawn on h4, but the queen here is into black's camp, and the king here is on f8 and has a castle. And we on move 19, c3 is played, logical to prevent the knight on f5 to come to d4. So now this is black to play and we reach what I call a critical moment. So feel free to pause the video and what is black's idea now on move 19. And in this position, what happened in the game? The move g5 was played. And that's a very pomidor moves and if black, uh, white, sorry, were to retrieve, then you do h4, and you can see this rook here is attacking over here. So on g5, um, white played rook d1, and Carson cannot take on g4, because Anish Giri would win a rook on d7. So Carson takes and takes, now the rook on d1 is attacking the queen on d8, so you cannot take that bishop on f4. But what is the great move here found by uh, Carson? And he saw that in advance, of course. And the second very key move in this game, queen a8. Now the queen is out of the way and the bishop on f4 has to move. So bishop c7 played, and now h4. And that's an amazing coordination. The queen on a8, the rook on h8, h4, h3, threatening checkmate on g2. And you can look at this position. There is no way for white to contest the amazing power of the queen on the long diagonal. And in this position, white and Ishgiri play f3 trying to block the range of the queen. And here, h3 played. And now it's very clear, black want to take on g2. And if white were to take on h3 like that, then of course the queen is coming and you have no counterplay against the black king. And you have all sorts of rook h3, queen e3 check, 9g3, and the king here on g1 is much more unsafe compared to the king on f8. So on move 23 after h3, white resign. And let's go check the next game. This game Magnus is playing with the white pieces against Ariza Ferruja up and coming grandmaster in Tata Steel Vikings tournament. So very important tournament in 21 for Magnus. Now, once again, I'm gonna go quickly with the opening. Queen's Gambit decline. And I'm pretty sure both players have prepared this position. So the game continues.
And here, interestingly, Queen A1 played. That reminds me of the previous game when Queen A8 was played. But here we're still in the opening and the game goes on. Queen 7 played. Now what's the idea if white captured? And black recapture on c5, and that's an equal position. So here, of course, Magnus wants to play for the win and plays a waiting move h3. And now, of course, white could repeat rook e5 and 97. But Magnus is playing for a win, and here he goes with a pawn sack d5. Very interesting position. Feruja accept the challenge. e5. The knight comes in. Queen d4. And we can see the knight on e4 cannot move because of a pin. So we have an interesting situation where white is down a pawn but has more active pieces. Rook dc8, right? We don't want to move the other rook because a6 would be hanging. And here we are in a critical situation again. Why to play? Feel free to pause the video and focus on this position. And I will reveal the move played by Magnus with white. And that's, I think, a great idea, which really changed the nature of the game. In here, he played e6, giving up a second pawn to have activity. A razor captured the pawn. Knight e5, right? Now we gain a very strong square for the knight. We can see black's retreating, but the position is still holding for black. And here it was difficult to find, but h5 was the right idea to avoid what's happening in the game. But in the game, a4, right? I can understand this move. Black is saying I don't see a threat against the king. I want to push my pass pawn. And here, once again, white to play. And knight g4 attacking the queen. The queen moves back. And here we take on e6. Another sack, and black captures, check, and we are once again in a critical moment, and here feel free to pause the video, what's happening next is very important, and in that moment, that's where black is losing the game. So what would you play with black, where well, the right move was king h8. Now, why do we sack another piece? And here, very important, and you're threatening checkmate and taking the knight will lose, but you have one move. Bishop h5, you avoid checkmate on g8, and black survives this position. But here, maybe Ariza Feruja was running low on time, and he played bishop f7. And here, check. Another sack, and white is down a rook, but you have no defense, right? If you were to try rook c7, rook e5 is coming with rook g5. So in the game, queen c7, and here Magnus Carlsen was very precise. And here, black resigned. It's very obvious that if you do check, you have a nice check here, and you finish with a checkmate like that. Let's go to the next game. In this final game, Marius Carson is black again and facing e4 by Fabiano Caruana. So now this game is from 2017, but it's very important as at the time Caruana 
was one of the best players in the world. And now you would say Firuja is more dangerous. But that was a very key game here. Now, of course, the Spanish opening is something that Magnus Carlsen has studied and played against Nipchen Miachi in Dubai 2021. So he's very familiar with this opening. And here, a5 played. And of course, the bishop has to retreat. And if you were to take here, that would be extremely bad for black. Because here, knight e5, and you will regain, you know, material. And if you try to do king e7, which will be normal here, then knight c6 forks the king. So it's well known here that bishop e7 is a move. Now the game continues. In this position, I will not spend a lot of time because Caruana had played this against Gawain Jones with white. So here the game continues. Very aggressive by Caruana. And here I would think that net a5 would be a logical move. But instead, before it's played, And here I would say, if I were looking at the Karana's game, that would be a critical moment for him. Here I thought knight a5 would be the key move, and of course black doesn't take and try to defend. But here maybe bishop d5 would be a clever move. And then you have to figure out how to continue, right? maybe rook c8, but I think white is better. But at any rate here, um, Black will be happy to exchange the bishop, and bishop c2 played, so the game carries on. We can see a lot of maneuvering, and again, knight a5 comes to mind in this position, but uh, Caruana with white plays slowly. So here, queen d8, targeting the pawn on a5. Queen b2 played. And after the game, it was discussed that d5 will be a much better try, but queen b2 played. So black captured the pawn, 92. And once again, feel free to pause the video. So black is open up as a lot of work to be done on the board. What would you play with black here? I'll give you a few seconds. In this critical moment, of course, Manu Carson shows his understanding of the position and played d5. And all of a sudden, we can say that the white center, the white pawn center, is under attack. So here, rook e1 played and simply bishop b8, rewarding the bishop on a very interesting diagonal. So here, in the game, white try to take in a center but let's say if white have done a waiting move then you can take on d4 take on g3 take on e4 and here play knight c4 and after this exchange we can see clearly black is better attacking the knight maybe moving the queen over here riding that knight and the rooks are very active while the queen is passive here and you have passes pieces and the white king is under danger so clearly that's the danger of waiting and seeing this kind of variation with bishop f1 then fabiano takes on d5 black takes bishop f5 attacking the rook rook moves Queen a3, attacking the knight, knight moves. But now what to do with white, right? If you were to take on e5, I'm taking like that, attacking g3, and on knight e4, g6 will be a problem for white. So in this situation, rook a d1 played, trying to put the rook against the queen. Take, and nine g5. All of a sudden, the knight here, jumping to h3, but could come to f3 as well. D4 played, trying to defend like that. 
the game is very sharp. Take bishop e6. So now clearly we're attacking the bishop on d4, and here queen e3 is played. And this is the final, final key moment in the game. What would you do with black? Black to play and win. Feel free to pause the video. I'm going to reveal the winning move. The winning move is the brilliant bishop f4. And right here, black is winning on the spot. So if you take on f4, knight h3, win the queen and the game. So that's not possible. Okay, so now you can try to go on e2 and try to survive like that. And here simply, you would just take, take a knight f3. And that wins the queen and the game. So bishop f4, beautiful final position. And in this position, white resigned the game. Very convincing win with the black pieces by minus Carson.